Let us look at two cases. So the first case is when you have the service as H2S and for the second case your service is water. Now for these two cases when would you select a lever for relief valve? If the answer is case 1 then the answer is incorrect and if the answer was case 2 then the answer is partially correct. Why is it so? The answer to it is that we learn in this video the things such as why to use a lever and especially when to use a lever like for example with service for what temperature should be used and especially what is this ASME code case 2203. So we'll look into all of these details. So let's get started. The first thing is for a relief valve, the basic function is you set a pressure to it. There's a fluid which is going to hit the relief valve. Once the set pressure is hit, the relief valve is going to relieve it out to the atmosphere. So if you notice, this is a very automatic process where there is very less human intervention. However, when you look at lever functioning, the lever is used to manually level up the relief valve and the liquid is removed out from the relief valve through manual intervention. However, did you notice something? That the entire purpose of relief valve gets defeated when you put a lever. Because ideally, the lever has to be done manually and we want a relief valve to work automatically. So why did this lever come into picture? Let's look into that. Initially, when steam was very important and was newly found, boilers were one of the most known equipments and the steam that was used for any and every industrial applications, like for example, whether it was transport through boats, ships, everywhere steam engines were used. Now, with respect to boilers, there was one thing which was very common that was explosions a lot of boilers were getting exploded due to over pressures etc and engineers had to come up with something to reduce this so they came up with the concept of putting up relief valves now this was working however they noticed that still there were a lot of accidents happening and this was very alarming so they realized that only relief valves might not be able to relieve it out to the atmosphere you need to look as to what were the cases where the relief valves were not working and thus they realized that a lot of sediments were coming into relief valves which was getting plugged between the seat and hence the relief valves were not able to open at the set pressure. So engineers had to come up with an idea. So they came up with an idea of putting a lever here. So lever basically is used only for testing purposes. So people initially would not like their boilers to be stopped and to you know dismantle the relief valve. So with a lever you can do periodic testing of it whenever you require maybe after six months or eight months using a lever and thus you can be ensured that the relief valve is working as it is designated to work at that particular set pressure. Now you might ask that for which liquids can we use this for toxic services? The answer is lever is never preferred for toxic services because the operator might not want it to be relieved out. Hence, you would question is for which services usually a lever is used. So let's look at an international standard of ASME and this section 8. So whether it is steam, water or air with a temperature which is greater than 140 degree Fahrenheit or 60 degree Celsius. This services should have a lever with the relief valve. Now, the next question that comes is that for our case 2, why was the answer partially correct? The answer was because the water temperature also has to be known. If the water temperature is above 140 degree Fahrenheit, only then would we go for a lever in this case. Now, the most important question of all that is what is this ASME code case 2203? This code case 2203 is specially used when you don't want to use lever in such cases. For that, it has a three step procedure or three steps that we need to follow. So let us look into what are these three steps. These are very simple logical steps that any user must do if they're thinking to exclude lever from the relief valve. The first condition of ASME code case is that the documented procedure for testing of the relief valve should be done. Why? Because the basic purpose of relief valve lever is to basically do periodic testing of relief valve. So if you're not using lever in your relief valve, then you must have a strong documented procedure of how are you going to check the relief valve. And they've gone a step further to say that you also have to notice that it should be an implemented procedure. So what are the steps you're going to take that it is not just a document, but that steps are implemented. The second step is 
which they mentioned here is something called as owner's approval now why do we require owner's approval why because maybe a lot of design engineering firms in order to save cost or maybe for some other reasons maybe space considerations or uh, maybe you know personal considerations they might say that will exclude the lever but finally the operator of the plant has to be taken into consideration is he okay with removing lever for such cases the third thing is also authority permission which is the jurisdiction where the project is to be executed why because boilers are very critical instruments and especially you need to know that whether the authority would allow you to exclude lever for such cases so wherever you implementing it first see whether the authority itself is allowing you to remove lever for relief valve